I literally, I'm looking right down. I can't even see my wristwatch. I can't see my own watch. Wow. I know I'm wearing one. I'm gonna leave that where it is. This would be the greatest gaffe if the first one was a mouse trap. Hey everyone, it's Nathan with Crown and & Caliber. And if you're wondering why there's a science fair project back on our table, it is because we are back with another Nathan Guesses Watches. Do, 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 yes, the game show you didn't know you need. A quick refresher. We did this a couple months ago where my colleague Jonathan randomly selected five watches and put them on the table in front of me and I could not see them and I had to guess them. There was a time frame set and we had a lot of fun. I was successful. I got all five brands, almost all five models, and ultimately did not have to take a pie to the face. So we are back and we are doing this again. And before we jump in, I wanna give a little bit of context to the rules here. So there are five watches in front of me that I have not seen. Jonathan has randomly selected these and put these in front of me. Oh, I have these not, are doozies this these week. These are doozies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make things a little bit trickier. We're gonna up the stakes from last time. So there are five watches. Each watch is worth 20 points for a total of 100 points. The brand is worth 15 points. The model is worth five points. Now, if I can get at least 70 points right, that means that I do not take a pie to the face. And instead, Jonathan takes a pie to the face. I am actually nervous this time. Yeah, there's, the stakes are higher. Um, if I do not get 70 points at least, then I am taking a pie to the face, which means somebody is taking a pie to the face. Now, last time I had a pie on screen and well, that didn't go well, we spilled it. So we have left the pie in the fridge. So pie is not on screen. Also worth noting, last time we gave away a couple of swag packs, things like t-shirts, hats, stickers, just fun for people that watched the video and were randomly selected. So we're gonna up the stakes on that one too. There are five watches. For every watch that I get right, we will give away one swag pack. So there is an opportunity to win one of five swag packs in this video. And all you need to do for a chance to potentially win one of these swag packs is comment on the video in the first week of it going live. I'm actually nervous about this one, guys. So, Jonathan, are you ready? As I'll ever be. Awesome, so what we're gonna do is, like last time, put 60 seconds on the clock. I get to grab the watch, I get to handle it, make my assessment, and after the 60 seconds, I will get an additional 60 seconds without the watch to deliberate and then make my guess. Let's go. All right, I'm is nervous, it, I'm nervous. I, have I know it's vision. somewhere around here. Uh, a little more to your right, just so you don't grab the other one on accident. Uh, and on your mark, I will start the timer. All right, here we go. Okay, so. Timer started. It is on a strap. Um, let's see, we have chronograph pushers. We have a bezel, but it doesn't rotate. We have a screw down crown. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, that clasp. It's a deployant. Um, can't actually figure out how to get it open. That's concerning. Um, it has the thickness. Has 30 seconds. Case design similar to a Tudor. I am so nervous. Um, pushers have 20 a seconds. lip. I'm counting down this time. Um, pushers are not screwed down. Oh boy. 10. Five, three, set it down. Okay, so, oh man, I'm already nervous. Okay, so there's 60 seconds for me to deliberate. It's a leather strap. Um, it has a deployant clasp, which makes me, um, that clasp did feel like a Tudor clasp um, in that mechanism and even in the shape of the clasp. The crown felt like a Tudor crown. The case design felt like a Tudor case and it's kind of blockier design. Um, the pushers were not screw down pushers um, for the chronograph and the bezel um, had a prominent bezel but it was not a rotating bezel. So it could either be a Black Bay chronograph, a Heritage chronograph. Um, those are probably the two options that uh, we're, 15, we're left with. 15 seconds. Um, man, I wish I could pick it back up. Um, oh, I'm trying to, I can't. Five, four, 
three. Okay, so brand I'm gonna go with is Tudor and model I'm going to go with the Black Bay Chronograph. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, oh my goodness. Okay, so that is 20 points. Um, I, this is a good start. <laughs> I feel good about that. Um, I think what the big giveaways for me there were the clasp, um, the crown as a very Tudor crown design, both in the knurling on it and the small space between the case and the crown, and the kind of overall case shape, case design um, felt very Tudor. I was a little stumped by the chronograph pushers. I could not recollect um, if they were um, screw down pushers or not. So whew, there we go, 20 points. Um, Mercy. In, in the bag. And that also means we are now giving away um, at least one swag pack. So um, good for you guys viewing. And are you ready to go on to number two, Jonathan? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right, here we go, number two. Okay, so. Um, oh boy. Um, interesting bracelet design. It's got a deployant clasp, butterfly, two sides, it's hidden. Um, I don't immediately recognize that bracelet. Um, screw down crown, which means there's some water resistance. Um, it feels like... 30 seconds. Somewhat of a traditional case shape, but the bezel is unique. There feels, one, two, three, four. Feels like it's an octagonal bezel. Um, 15 seconds. It's very thin. There is a, based off the feel, it's a sapphire case back. 10. Um, screw down crown. I'm trying to determine if it's an integrated case or not. Five. Um, three. I'm gonna go with the integrated case. Set, it, set down. it down. Okay, so, um, thinner watch design. It is on a bracelet. It has a deployant clasp, butterfly style, double deployant. It was a hidden clasp. Um, the case was pretty thin um, for what could be something with a screw down crown. Did feel like an integrated case and it had a unique octagonal be bezel. Um, so things that it could be. Octagonal bezel, you immediately think of, or I immediately think of the Royal Oak. 30. But I couldn't necessarily feel screws. Um, integrated case, there was a sapphire back, which also makes me think, um, Something, I feel like it could potentially be something like a Piaget or even... Um, 15 seconds. Ooh, it could be, it could be a Gerard Perigo. Um, 10. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with a Gerard Perigo Loretto. Ooh, right on time with two seconds to spare. You got it. Oh my gosh! Oh, I feel so good right now. Okay, so. Here was my thought process on that one. This is nervous um, laughter from behind the camera. My heart is still pounding. So we're up to 40 points. That means we are giving away at least two swag packs. My thought process is I did not immediately recognize the design of the deployant clasp. I knew it was a double deployant and it was a hidden clasp. So that eliminated a lot of maybe the more well-known designs. And feeling the case, I recognized that um, the bezel was unique. Um, once I could de deduce that it was an octagonal bezel, it definitely slimmed down the choices. I think the reason I did not go with an AP um, Royal Oak was twofold. Um, I could not feel screws, exposed screws on the bezel, and something in me just it didn't it didn't feel like an AP. I think maybe both in the thickness and um, they're pretty angular. The, yeah, I feel like I would have felt more. The integrated lugs, that edge. Yes, uh, and the it's integrated super case. Sharp. Yeah. The integrated case on this, or at least it felt more of an integrated case, um, kind of helped that. Oh man, that felt good. Okay, so <laughs> 40 points down. Um, oh, this is just a nervous video. All right, so <laughs> wait, wait, I know you feel it. You're telling me. I, I was... wish. I wish I was wearing a heart rate monitor and in the corner you could see what my heart rate is because I guarantee you it's in excess of 160. It's like I'm exercising right now. Okay, so where's the third watch? A little more to your left. Left. And then just below. So when so right you're here. ready, uh, more to your left. So yeah, so when you're ready, I will start the timer. All right, here we go guys. Watch number three. Okay, so looking like somewhat of a rubber strap. Um, Looking, interesting choice yeah, of looking. words. Um, 
Bezel rotates, so we have a dive watch. It's unidirectional. Um, there are thin crown guards come to a point. Um, oh boy. Case back feels stainless steel. Um, 30 seconds. It's not a deployant. Okay. I don't recognize that rubber. 15 does... seconds. Wait a second. 10. It's got a trident. 5. Um, Three, two, one. put it down. Okay. Um, oh boy. Oh, okay, so, uh, the buckle, this is not a deployant clasp. Rubber strap, could not necessarily nail it down. The underside texture is more of a waffle texture. The top had some pretty clear um, lines, almost to mimic like a three-link bracelet or an oyster bracelet. Uh, that being said, I think the giveaway on the bracelet I mean, on the strap was the Tang buckle that had the trident of a Tudor buckle. 30 seconds. Um, unidirectional bezel leads me to believe it's a dive watch. Um, the crown guards, though. 20? I mean, I, I mean, the immediate thing that comes to mind is a Pelagos. Um, but I, the bezel Ten. didn't feel like a Pelagos. I feel like I would have felt the the matte ceramic differently. I, I wasn't Five, paying attention to that. Four. Um, so my guess is gonna be a Tudor Pelagos. You got yes! It. Okay, so <laughs> there we go, guys. That's 60 points. Um, that means that we are sending out three swag packs. And um, Jonathan, if I get one more watch, <sighs> you're getting pied, um, which is gonna give me some, some relief. Okay, so I kind of went through on that one. Um, I think the um, exposed um, design on the strap kind of alluded to the oyster design, oyster um, bracelet design with that center section. Um, the tang buckle with the um, kind of Tudor trident design definitely helped. And then the um, sharper kind of prominent, more modern crown guard design um, led me to believe that it was um, the Pelagos. I think I was a little stumped on the bezel because I thought I'd be able to denote the difference um, feel-wise between a matte ceramic bezel and a traditional like aluminum bezel, but nevertheless, um, I got the watch, which means I feel good. I feel really good right now. Um, okay, so. That's good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Whew, okay. Here we go, number four. Okay. Um, not a screw down crown. Uh, feels like I mean, we're talking leather, maybe alligator. Um, oh, you're done for, Fred. You're done for. That clasp, that, that shape. I, I feel like that's a paddock right there. Um, there are, wait. I've never thought about the potential of maybe injuring a watch. Um, <laughs> I, I noticed there is a, uh, 20 seconds. I got nervous. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot a, um, forgot to watch the time. Too. There is a pusher over here. 15. Um, uh, 10. Five, four, okay. two. I'm going to put it down safely. Stop. Okay. Yes, thank um, you. So it is precious metal. Um, <clears throat> it just has heft to it. And being on a strap and having that kind of heft, um, there was a texture to the strap, which makes me think it's something like alligator. Um, the deployant clasp um, felt like it had the um, paddock uh, insignia, or I guess it's the, the, it's not the cross. What is it? It had the paddock insignia on it. I don't um, know what it had. I uh, have no idea. The crown did not screw down. I could not feel crown guards. 30. And it had a pusher at what felt like about 10 o'clock, which makes me, then I'm trying to think, what paddock has a pusher at 10 o'clock? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that it is a um, Patek Philippe World Time. Oh boy. Yeah. Is it really? <laughs> yes. It oh, is. sweet, sweet, sweet pie. Okay, so um, 
I'm breathing a sigh of relief because I currently have 80 points. That means we're sending out right now four swag packs and Jonathan is going to be taking a pie to the face. And I know he is not happy about this. So a, a few things that gave that away, just to re reiterate, is the um, Patek Philippe deployant clasp. I um, knew the brand would be easy with that one, but the model was yes. the, the hard um, part. Once I got to Patek, I knew it was um, precious metal. And I think the corrector at 10 o'clock really helped. And I was trying to go through in my mind what Patek models would use a corrector and, or a pusher. Because a pusher extends from the case, a corrector is flush with the case. And a lot of Patek models use correctors, things like annual calendars and such. So I was able to eliminate those. And I was thinking, instead of having a corrector, something you often need a tool to depress, having something like an actual pusher on the case meant it's meant to be used more regularly, and if you are traveling, being able to change time zones with a world time would make more sense. So that is how I uh, arrived at the Patek Philippe world time. <sighs> okay, one more. At this, at this point, we are just, I'm doing this one for you guys. I wanna be able to send out five swag packs, so I really wanna get this last one to give everyone watching this that comments the best chance on winning a swag pack. So Jonathan, if you'll point me in the direction of the watch, all right, closer to you, a little bit more to your left. I will start the timer. Okay, here we go, guys. Can we go five for five? Okay. Um, this is an interesting, feels like a distressed leather. Um, don't immediately, it's a deployant class. Feels like distressed leather. It's got buttons on the side. I don't recognize the feel. Let's get to the case. Um, screw down crown traditional shape over there. Um, again, we have a pusher at 11. 30. Oh man. Um, got a rotating bezel. Um, it's really sharp downturn lugs. 15. I'm unscrewing the crown. 10. Five. Oh man, I... One, put it down. Oh, um. <laughs> this one you're gonna have to think kind of abstract. Okay, about. so, um, felt like a distressed leather strap. I didn't recognize the deployant clasp. We have a screw down crown, um, pretty traditional case shape. Uh, case uh, crown guards are um, kind of pointed. There is a, um, an additional, um, crown at around 10 or 11 o'clock, which is also screwed down, which makes me think helium escape. So I jumped to um, Omega. 30. But I cannot, it, the bezel was rotating, um, but I can't think of an Omega with a helium escape valve on a leather strap. Um, oh, oh, aha, haha. 15. Okay, um, I, I it, it felt thinner if I can remember, so I'm eliminating Planet Ocean. 10. Um, the knurled knobs throw me off. I don't have enough Five. experience with the newer Seamaster. Okay, I'm gonna go with- Make your decision now. An Omega Seamaster 300M, the 42 millimeter edition. The newest one. That that might technically be correct. So you got the brand. Okay. Um, you're, you're gonna have to tell me <laughs> if this is correct because- Can I look at it? Yeah, okay. actually, uh, yeah, go ahead and- Look at it. Um, so. I'm gonna take it down. I wanna see what this actual last watch is. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> oh man, I I thought the Milanese, this is the new, this is the Omega Bond um, Seamaster, but this is the new 42 millimeter Seamaster. Um, so, I mean, I was right. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure if you were, te like technically you might be correct. Um, this felt like distressed leather. I couldn't, it is so, that um, stainless steel mesh on this Bond Seamaster. Is it steel or is that titanium? Oh, you're right, it is titanium. Um, this watch is exceptional and I didn't recognize that crown because I haven't felt one of these watches. It feels light, but because this feels like leather, it reinforced the idea that it was a leather strap. And because of that, I never actually got to the point that it was titanium. I think the reason I went to a 42 millimeter, this is the newer one, is because I did not recognize the crown design. Mm. Um, which felt different. And that could also be because it's a titanium design, but also- That's some um, bold deductive reasoning. But also I could not think 
of the previous model being on a leather strap. And so yeah, I thought, you were stuck on leather. And I thought maybe that the, the newer version could potentially be had on a leather strap. So maybe not 100% accurate in what I felt. Um, so what is that, 95? I think again we go with 95. I or think no, it's, it's like 97.5 again because you got you got the right. Sea I got master. it was a 42 millimeter Seamaster. Yeah. I just did not have the um, the actual titanium. So I would say yeah. 97 and a half. That's I think tough. that still means we're giving out five swag packs. So guys, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna give out five swag packs um, in this video, and all you have to do for a chance to get one of these five swag packs is comment on the video in the first week. Um, we love doing this. I mean, it truly gets my heart racing. I know Jonathan's heart is also racing. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jonathan, you ready to go take a pie to the face? No. Well, guys, here we are. I've got a pie, I've got a Jonathan, and I am so glad that he has graciously volunteered to take this pie to the face. I did not volunteer. <laughs> I did not volunteer. And just remember, guys, Mmm, that is a real pie. Thank you so much, Jonathan. That was violent. <laughs> you did good. You did good. And that's the end of the video. Oh, <laughs> why did I do that? That, all right, it's over. Thanks for watching. All right, I'll get you paper towels.